The electrical power of a circuit is literally how much work, how much energy is being expended per time. Just like in classical concepts of energy, classical mechanics of energy and power, which is the rate of energy expenditure, electrical power is the same thing. Electrical power is measured in units of watts. usually demonstrated by the symbol W. Now you've probably heard that term watt or kilowatt because it shows up in the electric bill, but it won't show up as kilowatts because that's again, that's a rate of energy. It shows up as kilowatt hours because if a watt or power is equal to energy over time, then a kilowatt hour, right, is energy over time times time, which gives you net energy. And the classical way of calculating the power consumed by a circuit or the power consumed by any single component in a circuit, P is equal to the voltage times the current. And this also makes sense because what's going on here? Voltage is energy over charge and current is charge over time, right? The rate of flow of electrical charge, right? Electrons flowing. Well, then these cancel out. When you multiply V and I, what do you get? You get energy over time, which again is watts. Excellent. So the voltage drop across an entire circuit will tell you, right? And will tell you how much power times the times its current is it will tell you how much how much power is being used by that particular circuit. Now if you look at the voltage drop only over a single component and the current flowing through just that single component, then you'll figure out the power consumed or dissipated, right, absorbed, whatever term you want to use, by that particular component of the circuit. So it all just works out really neatly. Now, of course, because we have Ohm's law, this has multiple instantiations. It's also equal to, well, if you substitute V over R for, for I, you get V times V over R, which is equal to V squared over R. This can also be substituted the other way. And instead of substituting out I, we'll substitute out V and we'll get I R times I, which is equal to I squared R. And these are the three equations for power. It's either the voltage times the current or the voltage squared divided by the resistance or the current squared times the resistance. Now, of course, this is only for DC systems. It is not for alternating current systems. It's not for sinusoidal systems, right? It's not for systems where voltage is changing over time or worse, it's not for systems that have impedance because when you have impedance, you have phase shifts potentially, and V and I are out of are out of uh, are out of phase. As a result, it can be very tricky to calculate the calculate the um, the power for a sinusoidal system. But it's actually not that hard because it's related to the impedance. So if we know, for example, V equals, or one of these, right? We, if we go back to the generalized Ohm's law statement, where we have V equals IZ for impedance, you could say, well, why don't we just plug this straight into for R and we'll get our answer. And that's pretty close. You could say for AC, you get V squared over Z for example. And that, that's almost there. It's not quite there. 
unfortunately, because that doesn't necessarily reflect the true energy that's being pushed through for a for an alternating circuit with a complex impedance. And the reason for that is because impedance, right, has both a resistive component and a reactive component. Reactive terms consume no power. This is critical. Reactive elements, purely reactive elements, And only, power is only lost over real resistance. Which means that if the impedance is purely reactive, there's no power being dissipated through that system. Let's take a look at that. Let's look, for example, at an AC system that just has an inductor L on it with some voltage source V of T. I'm just gonna leave it as V. But you know that this is sinusoidal. Because the inductor is drawing up charge and then pushing it back and then drawing up charge and pushing it pushing it back you can also do the same with a with a with a capacitor it's probably easier to understand it with a capacitor but they're the same both of these will behave the same way in terms of power dissipated in a pure capacitor right during this during the positive pulse of the sinusoid you will push current on push electrons on here and during the negative well, actually, technically, it'll come from the negative side, but it doesn't matter. Current will go in, and during the negative phase, current will go out. And then current will go back in, and current will go back out. And this is just what's going to happen back and forth. So how much energy is being consumed, burned, used by this capacitor? The answer is zero. In a purely reactive circuit, if we just have capacitors and inductors, it consumes no power whatsoever. Now, of course, can you build such a circuit? No. Right? These are not physically realized because every capacitor, every inductor has some actual parasitic resistance that's associated with it. But for the purposes of simple, simple understanding, we don't model them. But any physically realizable capacitor or inductor has a real resistance to it as well. And so it has both real and complex components of impedance, and thus it will consume some small amount of power. But in the theoretical sense, an ideal capacitor that has no other uh, modality other than no other impedance component other than the reactants consumes no power you can only consume power with real resistance and so that means that this isn't quite right right this isn't going to give us the right answer instead what we have to do is we have to look at the reactive component and the fraction of, of, of real versus reactive, um, but the ratio of reactive to, to resistive components are of impedance, and that fraction will tell us, right, what's going on. What does this mean? So if we have, right, our phasor diagram with real power, real resistance here, reactance here, and our impedance here, it's only this resistance that's going to contribute to power. And furthermore, you don't want to use the magnitude of the sinusoidal voltage either because that's not, that amplitude changes, goes up and down and up and down. That's not particularly correct either. So what you want instead is you want the RMS value, or at least if, you, if you're talking about a, if you're talking about a sinusoid. So you want the root mean square, right? The average power 
of an AC system is VRMS times IRMS times the fraction of the impedance that is times the portion of impedance that is purely reactive. And what it means is that you have to scale this by the by the component that is here in R. So if this has some theta, if your if your impedance is written as the magnitude of z e to the i theta, then this equation for average power is going to include a cosine theta term. which is going to scale as a function of the angle, which makes sense, right? Because if cosine of theta is zero, if this angle is zero, then how much of the, pow the potential power that's in the circuit here, V times I, is gonna be resistive? Well, all of it, because theta is zero, which means this Z is gonna be right on top of the R, and the only component to impedance will be R. And therefore, this becomes one and your average power is just V times I when your voltage and your and your current are perfectly in phase because that's what that theta means. However, when they are perfectly out of phase and theta is, is pi over two, which means this thing is pointing straight up, what what is the fraction of of uh, of that of that impedance that's component that has a component of resistance? Zero. And thus when the voltage and the impedance are perfectly out of phase, right? When they're pi over two out of phase, then cosine of pi over two is zero and the average power dissipated is zero. What that means is you have a purely reactive circuit and thus zero power is being consumed. And then you have something in between, which is just going to be some nice relationship that is the cosine of theta to tell you what the, re the resistive component of this impedance is. And this is this and any other way you might be able to permute this equation gets you basically the same thing, where the RMS values here will always tell you the potential, right? If you calculate it with Z, that would be the potential of the, the, total, the total power that's, that the circuit has potentially, but you would still have to come here and multiply this by cosine of theta in order to get it right so that you had your fractional component. And that in a nutshell is electrical power, both for DC and for AC systems.